One of the most common questions that I get asked from sales managers and business owners is what are the traits or the characteristics that I should be looking for in a salesperson to know that they have the skills to sell? So I tell them the Eclair formula. I'm Scott Silvenbell. It's July 29th, 2017, five o'clock in the afternoon, perfect day here in Sacramento, California to talk about how to hire and how to find top salespeople. Now this is video number 1,500 on my YouTube channel. So I figure I'd give you some pretty cool insights since it's a momentous video. Now I use this thing called the Eclairs formula when companies hire me to go through and sort through people who they're thinking about hiring. Okay, so it's an acronym, Eclairs. And so the E stands for empathy. Now I got a chance to sit down with my good friend and coach, Dr. Kevin Hogan. And I asked him a couple years back, I said, Kevin, uh, what is the one most hidden characteristic of influence that most people don't understand? And he told me empathy. And I said, wow, that's kind of interesting. I would have thought it would have been something else. And he said, you know, think about this. Bill Clinton, whether you like him or you don't like him, is known for having empathy, and he can sway people's decisions based upon that movement. So, you know, if you live outside of the United States, I'm sure you know who Bill Clinton is. If you live here in the United States, I'm sure you know who it is. The guy is known for having empathy, and that ability to empathize with the people that you're sitting with and that they're, they're buying from you and putting yourself in their shoes really does help. Now, the way that I look for this is I may tell them something personal about myself. So I do have a hearing problem. I do have a back issue. I do have food allergies. I may throw something out there just to see what kind of empathy that they have, right? I may tell them a story just to see what happens. And if, if there should have been empathy in that story for that story and that person doesn't have it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have empathy, but it could be a problem. So I try again. So it's a matter of trying a couple of times because it could just be nervous energy. They're interviewing for a job. And when you sit down with me, it's not always the easiest thing, okay? So empathy, and you're gonna wanna test them out, okay? The second thing that I look for in the Eclairs formula is confidence. Now, confidence happens in quite a few different ways. Now, if you're around any type of sales process long enough and job hiring process for salespeople, you gotta know that the job of the person interview is to throw the salesperson off to see what they're gonna do in a weird situation. Now, I think back of like the perfect situation would be from Chet Holmes. Chet Holmes used to tell people, hey, look, thanks for interviewing with me. I gotta let you know, I see a salesperson here, but I don't see a closer. And he would look for that person to come, the person to come back, the salesperson come back and give some pushback, right? You can test the person to look for confidence. You could tell them, look, I don't believe that answer, or I'm not sure of it. There's lots of different ways to test the confidence, but you're gonna look for a couple of things, and here's what you're gonna look for. You're gonna look for posture. A good, confident person is gonna have straight across shoulders. Their chin's gonna be at a pretty good level. The pace of speech that they have is gonna be remain constant. It's not gonna fluctuate up or down a lot. There's not gonna be a bunch of uh, pauses, ums, and ahs. These are all signs of confidence. It doesn't mean like every single one of these things have to be here. And you can watch the person's breathing pattern. You can, if they just keep asking you questions to avoid the question, you know that they lost some confidence. But confidence is key because you gotta know is that any time that a salesperson goes against somebody buyer, buying and the buyer gives them some sort of objection, if they lose confidence really quick, it's really tough to get back on track and make that sell without a huge amount of discounting. It can happen, but it usually takes a lot of discount, okay? So the second thing is, the third thing is leadership. Now there's a lot of things that happen in the sales process that you may not have thought of, but as a salesperson, you have to hold the person accountable that's sitting across from you or coming to buy something from you, and it takes leadership skills. It takes some of like, this is what's gonna happen. This is what we're gonna do. You're gonna look for, for patterns of their conversation, like this is what it's gonna take. This is what I'm gonna do for you. You're looking for certainty. You're looking for them saying, I'm gonna take charge, and this is what I'm going to do, okay? So you could build some doubt and say, hey, look, you know, I don't really think this is the job for you, right? I don't know if this is the right fit. And they go, hey, look, I gotta let you know, this is something that I'm all in for. This is something that I can handle. Or you could give them a situation. You could give them a situational type of a question. You could say, hey, this happened, what would you do? You're gonna look for their leadership skills, okay? Now, fourth thing is attentive. Are they attentive to what's going on? Do they pay attention to who's in the room? Do they pay attention to names? Do they pay attention to titles? Are they attentive to what the conversation is about? Now I can tell you, I've interviewed in in 18 months. I've sat down in over 300 interviews, okay, for different functions, different things in businesses, for a couple of different companies. And there are a lot of people who come in and they just they're just mailing it in. They really don't want to be there. They really don't want the job. They're just doing the interview for their parents, their parole officer, or whatever it is. 
They're not attentive. They're not paying attention to what's going on. They're not paying attention to their body language. They're not paying attention to what they're saying. They're not paying attention to what they're doing. They're not paying attention to the answers that they're giving in a conversation. Are they attentive? Okay. Fifth thing, are they interesting? There are a lot of people out there who are one hit wonders, meaning they can talk about anything and everything about themselves, right? I could talk about me, but they, they can't keep the conversation going. They can't keep uh, the, the, the whole conversation interesting. And you gotta know as a salesperson, there's times where you have to keep uh, the entertainment going. And if you only have like one thing to talk about, like, and you know this, this is a person who was in high school and they scored the winning touchdown. It's the only thing they talk about. They're not interesting. They have no conversation skills. They have no rapport building skills. So in this is gonna be rapport building. So I gotta let you know, as part of a test, one of the things that I do in a job interview for a salesperson is I let it get awkwardly silent. I let that person kind of stew and go, oh, am I supposed to talk? Am I not supposed to talk? And I look for that nervous energy and I look how they interact with the nervous energy. Okay, so that's the trick. You sit there, you let some awkward silence happen, you give an awkward answer and see what they do. Can they keep the conversation interesting? Okay. Six, resilient. Now this is gonna come down to closing skills. And I mentioned earlier the whole thing with Chet, Chet Holmes where he would tell somebody, hey, it looks like you're a salesperson, but you're not a closer. There's times where you gotta give pushback in the sales presentation that they're giving you. They're telling you that I'm a salesperson, so why not throw a couple of objections at them? Hey, I, you know what? I really don't think you're gonna be that good of a salesperson. I've got doubts based upon this industry. I don't know if you're gonna be a good fit. I don't know what you're gonna do, but I wanna see if they're gonna come back. I wanna see if they got pushback. I'm gonna change the subject, and I'm gonna see if they're gonna do something to hold me accountable and bring it back. I want to know how uh, uh, resilient that they are. And then the last one, the last thing is I want to see if they smile. Now there is a certain thing to be said about salespeople who can make buyers laugh. And somebody who is super serious all the time, has they can sell, don't get me wrong, they can sell, but I have seen from sitting across the table from salespeople, from, from writing with them co-pilot, that the guys who have the easiest time selling and getting out of an objection are the guys who can look at it like it's a game and play, and they do smile at the right time. I'm not saying the creepy joker smile where it's like the full on, right? No, they, do, they, do they smile? Do they smile with the people? Are they friendly, okay? So here's the thing. I take all of this information and I put it into like an index. There's seven letters here in the Eclair formula, okay? So we've got empathy, confidence, leadership, attentive, interesting, resilient, and smile. And if they've got four of those seven, I'm way cool, that's awesome. If they got five of those seven, that's amazing. Six of the seven, that's really good. And seven of the seven, you know, that's awesome. That's a, probably a good person to start taking a look at. Now, it doesn't mean that the person that you're sitting with that has these skills is a closer right off the bat. They could need your coaching. They could need your help. They could need skills training. I'm just saying, these are the characteristics that I look for when I'm sitting down and someone says, hey, Scott, we need you to come take a look at applicants and we need you to do the interview and go through the entire process with us. So there you go. There's the Eclairs formula for video number 1,000. 500 on my YouTube channel. Now, if you could do a small favor for me, in the box down below, leave a comment, question, or story, that'd be fantastic. To the right, to the left, there's a subscribe button. You know what you gotta do, you gotta subscribe. And then last of all, you can send it out to all your friends via StumbleUpon, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, why not even LinkedIn? Scott Silverman Bell. We'll see you soon, thanks for watching, aloha.